Hello, friends. I am Pastor Robert Abner, and I serve Lutheran Church of the Cross in Muncie, Indiana, and Grace Village, the Lutheran Episcopal Presbyterian Campus Ministry at Ball State University. I uh, do not Adjust your screen to try and find me. I am not in the shot anywhere. I thought I would do something a little different today and just kind of explain to you all what all of this stuff is that's behind me when I make these videos. And um, maybe give you a little glimpse into my um, what these things mean to me in my journey of faith. And, you know, a real quick you know thing is that most of it is just... Um, different images of saints and icons with some various uh, Dia de los Muertos stuff uh, mixed in between, or Dia de Muertos, depending on, you know, uh, how you approach that, or the Day of the Dead. Um, but this is stuff I've just collected, accumulated over time. Um, a lot of it's got uh, no real sentimental attachment to it, but then some of it does have some deep sentimental attachment to it. So, um, I thought I'd just explain some of it here uh, as you, as you know, because uh, many of you have asked, you said, what is all that stuff behind you? Or you've been in my office and you've asked me to explain some of it. We're really going to tie it all together at the very end here with this cross here in the middle because that's very, very special to me. Um, but, you know, uh, I picked up a lot of this stuff over time uh, just at various uh, thrift stores and flea markets and things like that. Picked a lot of it, most of it, almost all of it up cheap. And so it's not like I've got a fortune wrapped up in this artwork. And so, um, yeah, I've always been drawn to uh, images of the saints. I like it as artwork and it's just a reminder of their lives and, uh, you know, good examples of the faith for us. Uh, if you are a member of the Roman Catholic Church, you uh, probably uh, pray to the saints for intercession, which I really honestly don't have any problem with. Um, I may have done it a time or two myself, truth be told, uh, asking the saints to pray for us. And the reasoning behind that is if we would ask someone who is living to pray for us, why would we not ask someone who has died to pray for us if they are on the other side of the kingdom? Uh, you know, we use those terms, uh, the church on this side of uh, life is what's known in theology terms as the church militant. And after someone has died, they join the, ch they join the church triumphant. So um, we can talk a lot about death and what state people are in when they die, if they're asleep until the resurrection, or if they're uh, hanging out in heaven with Jesus, if they're in some form of purgatory, which there are many to discuss, but that's not for today's video. Let's keep it light and just talk about uh, some of these um, fun pieces of art that I have. And so uh, let's hit the table here first. Um, got this piece with Jesus and Mary right here in the middle. Pick that up cheap at a flea market one day. I'll just hit some of the, the more important ones to me here. Um, we've got St. Patrick over here, and you've got uh, the infant of Prague there, St. Saint, Saint Lucia or Santa Lucia there, uh, some praying hands made out of coal that I picked up in West Virginia, and a little, um, uh, those are some prayer beads that a friend picked up outside of Damascus and gave to me, so it always reminds me of the Apostle Paul outside of Damascus. Um, St. Teresa of Lisieux, and then uh, you've got a rosary here made of skulls that I have made for All Saints Day. Um, a, a medal for St. Teresa here, a little statue of St. Martin de Porres, as we talked about last week. Um, St. Rita on the right there, and St. Rita? No, that's not St. Rita. That's St. Elizabeth, who is the patron saint of widows and widowers. Um, over here, you've got, obviously, everyone knows this guy pretty well, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, that was a gift from my friend's mom. Thanks, Ev. Um, St. Rita back there. That's St. Rita there. We've got a nice, big, uh, pewter music piece statue of Martin Luther here. It's around 100 years old. And it still plays music, so that's really cool. Uh, St. Jude, right here, uh, the uh, patron saint of lost causes, as he's typically known for. Um, I picked him up when my great aunt was in the hospital in Kentucky. I think she was at St. Jude's in Lexington, so that, that was important to me. Uh, St. Nicholas, everyone knows him pretty well. I believe St. Joseph there with the infant Jesus. Um, 
yeah, I know uh, various people have picked up these skulls for me at different times, and so I've always appreciated that. You can see some of the skeletons around as well, indicative of um, Mexico's Day of the Dead. I love that celebration. I love the idea behind it. Um, it ties in with the church's All Saints and All Souls Day. And so, as many of you know, I was ordained on All Saints Day, and so that's a very special church holiday for me. Uh, the purple one there in the middle uh, picked up at a, at a horror convention, and uh, someone was doing some cool sugar skull art, and so that one is very special to me. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, lots of Mary. It's always easy to find Mary artwork, and so lots of it's pretty cool, so I... Uh, I had to quit buying that just because there was too much of it. Um, <laughs> we've got this uh, copper plate of Moses here with the Ten Commandments. You've got a young Jesus there. There's some more. Uh, another St. Patrick. I believe that one's St. Melodios. He's like a patron saint of singing. Um, I think that's a Mary of Fatima there. Uh, this one here is a nun. She was one of the founding sisters, I think, of the, the Sisters of Notre Dame. And uh, that's actually a relic. There's a piece of cloth on the back of it that was touched to her her body. And so that's like a third tier tertiary relic. Uh, St. Anthony there. Um, this one here was so mysterious. I couldn't even I didn't know who it was. I had to ask people on Facebook to help me figure it out. But St. Dorothy of Caesarea. So that's, that was fun getting some crowdsourcing help on that. Uh, cool one here with uh, Joseph and the baby Jesus and a young John the Baptist kissing Jesus's feet there as a foreshadowing of things to come. The little scroll uh, on the artwork there actually says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, which many of you know that text well. Uh, we've got the nativity scene here with some more uh, symbolism going on. A uh, little icon of the Trinity. Saint Padre Pio, a modern day saint that experienced the stigmata. Uh, that cross up there was made for me by my uh, friend's daughter, Ellie. And, uh, you know, more sugar skulls, crosses, another Mary there. Um, my friend Kate got me that little cross. I can't remember where it's from. Um, some really cool artwork there that I just found at Goodwill on a whim. That's, uh, you know, the, uh, the resurrection, if you will. And then over here, very important icon to me, the harrowing of hell. One of my favorite uh, little throwaway scripts in scripture that uh, we attribute to Holy Saturday between Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Uh, a little cross my friend Randy gave me, uh, the first Native American saint. Uh, forgive me, I can't remember her name. Um, saint Michael, the Archangel, an important one to me when I was younger. Um, another skull there. I think it's another Saint Anthony here. Uh, Sacred Heart that I picked up down in New Orleans. Uh, St. John the uh, theologian and the evangelist. That was given to me by my cousin. Um, uh, St. Robert Bellarmine. Found that one in just a random place. Uh, John the Baptist and Christ the Good Shepherd. Um, you guys know I'm big on Christ the Good Shepherd and, and the, the story of the lost sheep. Um, St. Thomas, one of my favorite stories in scripture. Uh, here's another one that uh, was so random. I had to, to crowdsource that one on the internet. St. Cecilia and the angel. Um, you know, there's so many, so, so many. You've got Pentecost here, one of my favorite church holidays. I believe that one is also St. Therese of Lizzo. Um, yeah, that sums it up pretty good to, to give you just an overview of all this stuff that's behind me and, uh, Half thrift store purchases, but half half gifts that were really important to me. So um, here, the, the big piece in the middle, which usually evokes the most questions, but this is a cross made for me by my dear friend and mentor, uh, Chaplain Mike Ashley, uh, retired Air Force chaplain, master woodworker, excellent musician, and all around swell guy. But Mike made that for me as an ordination gift. And when we had it at the ordination, it was empty. And so my friend Chad and I made all those little figures that you see in there. So let's get a look at those. And they're just meant to symbolize just those who have died and are now resting in the promise of Christ. That's why they're kind of faceless, hooded, robed figures there as though they were buried in burial shrouds. And I first got the idea because uh, there were these giant crosses at one of the seminaries I attended. 
Uh, you all know I'm a proud Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary grad, but I did part of my seminary experience at that that one up in the Twin Cities. They call it uh, Luther Seminary. I'm just teasing all my friends that went to Luther. It's a great school. I did my summers there, and so there's a chapel there called the Chapel of the Cross. Very coincidental that I'm now serving at Church of the Cross. Um, that had these giant crosses that had these figures in them, and I was just really struck by the symbolism of it, to know that our friends, our loved ones, those who have gone on, uh, rest safely in the promise of the cross, the promise of the resurrection, the promise of what Jesus has done for us. And so at my ordination, um, I invited folks as they came up for communion to pick one of these little statues out of, one of these little figures out of the basket that was next to it, and to place it in the cross, and to think about a friend or a loved one who has gone on before them and remember that at communion at the holy sacrament at the eucharist that uh we that still connects us to them the only thing separating us from them is just a thin veil and so when we take communion we can imagine that that communion not only connects us to christ but it connects us to the whole church and everyone who has gone before us and so that is what this cross is symbolic of and i took all of those figures and I glued them in the places in which they were placed by those who came up to place them in there. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of fun for you to see all my stuff, my goodies here. I've got other random stuff around, but I've already yammered on at length. So, uh, until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you, my friends. Stay safe.